Hello, this is Mary Jackson, and this is a video that reviews some of the things that you need to know as you're working on your capstone uh, topic selection and the capstone project. First of all, you should make sure that you understand the assignment. Um, you've gotten a pre uh, PowerPoint presentation about this, and I will just review a couple of things that I think are important to keep in mind as you're doing this. Um, what are you doing? Make sure you read the assignment and are clearly understand what it is that you're going to be doing. You're writing a paper, but you're also doing a presentation and you're presenting information on what is best practice for the topic that you select. You are going to have seven peer reviewed sources that you will need to have um, that are very specific to a specific topic. Uh, you need to be, seven is not very many. And so your topic needs to be very focused and very um, uh, on point. No more than three of these sources may be evidence level C. There's a lot more instructions about that um, in the PowerPoint that has been shared with you. If you have any questions about the level of evidence for a, a, a source, I suggest talking to your PA advisor. Um, I'm not always ex exactly sure how to evaluate those things. Here are a couple of things that you should do when working with this topic. First of all, think about the topic. Think, what are you most interested in? Um, this is a topic you're gonna to be working with for a while. So pick something that maybe has piqued your interest um, in as you've been going through school. Think how it might be useful to you in your future work to give you something to talk about at interviews, um, to uh, be up on a current topic in the field, in the area of specialty that you're interested in. Uh, and so be, you know, um, judicious in how you think about what you're going to be working on. Um, make sure your topic is still a current topic. Uh, don't pick something where uh, it's been settled and how the protocols for treatment are pretty much the same five years ago as they are now. You want to pick something where people are discussing it and that um, when you present to the uh, PA folks, you are presenting um, some, you know, cutting edge, interesting things that are happening right now in this topic. Be as specific as possible. And I'm going to come back to this over and over again. And uh, when I give you feedback about your topics, I'm going to say it needs to be more focused. Um, some of you will get it right off the bat, but a lot of people will pick these very, very broad topics and um, they're just, it doesn't work. You can schedule an online topic conference with me. There'll be more information about that um, coming out. I'm happy to talk with you at any point. If you wanna come by the library, you can, but I will sc schedule Zoom conferences with me uh, to talk about your topic um, as many times as you wanna talk about it. The biggest issue, as I've already mentioned, is the topic is too big. So how do you get it smaller? Um, if there, here are some examples of how if it's too, how do you determine if it's too big? If there is an entire book about the topic, if the search re results in Medline PubMed are over a thousand or five hundred, um, I'm still probably going to encourage you to focus it more. Under if it's around five hundred, you may not have a good way of focusing it. But if it's over a thousand, you're going to need to do something. And if it's well over a thousand, then you definitely need to do something. And I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to do that. So what should you not do to make it smaller? Um, how there are some bad practices. One is to just throw in random search terms. If you put in things like procedure or treatment or um, effects or causes or consequences, the numbers will go down. But those aren't good search terms. They're not adding to value to your search. They're just things that random words that the computer has to now find in your searches. So that's not the way to focus it. Um, the other thing to not do is uh, focus on a particular, uh, you can focus on a particular age group, and I do strongly recommend that, but you should not use numbers. Um, don't use dates, don't do ages. The computer does not understand that those are dates or ages. It, it just sees a number. And if you put in 13 to 18, it doesn't see thir ages 13 to 18. It sees page numbers or um, 
you know, product numbers or volume numbers or lots of other things. So don't ever put the numbers in your actual search term. But you can limit by date and you certainly can limit to age groups. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a minute. Um, abbreviate. Don't use abbreviations, even if it's a very common abbreviation like TB or intravenous or AIDS. Um, I almost, I'm almost always write out the unabbreviated form and not the abbreviated form. A lot of common things are the computer can easily search by abbreviations, but you don't know what it searches well, which abbreviations it searches well and which ones it doesn't. So I always put out the um, official full name of things. So what can I do? What should you be doing as best practices with uh, reduced focusing your search? So um, the number one thing I suggest, suggest um, is uh, limiting by, po uh, by population group. Um, and um, that is a great way to do it. Um, and there are a lot of different um, ones that you can do. And um, some I have suggested, so male, female, uh, race, ethnicity, and then we come back to age again. And um, that is a little tricky um, because I told you you can't use numbers. And so you have to figure out um, what uh, you're going to um, do with that. So some age groups are super easy. Um, 13, 18 year olds, adolescents, teenagers, that's a simple one. Um, people who are adults, Adults is about the only age. You can try middle age. There's not a lot of other categories. Um, you can do older, um, but the word terminology for old people is there are a lot of them, elder, elderly, seniors, um, aged. And so sometimes you just have to look in the database and see what kinds of terms are being used to make sure you get the right ones. This is something I can help you with um, if you're feeling frustrated about it. Uh, children can be zero to 18. Uh, you can do infants. That is pretty straightforward, but the age groups really from one up to 13, there's not good terminology. So children's going to be it and you're going to get a lot of stuff that may be not your exact age group. There are some other ways that you may be able to reduce it. Um, the intervention you're going to do, are you going to, is there a specific thing that you're going to try to try and do? Uh, maybe you would look at two different types of things. This is harder to search. Um, I don't usually recommend this, though I have seen students successfully do this, um, but it has to be a very common uh, comparison. And again, I can help you with this. Uh, look in the databases, see what you're seeing, but I have had some students very successful with Two procedures that are sort of um, currently being uh, debated, assessed, and um, a lot of times there is a lot of discussion about them if you pick the right thing. Um, a comparison maybe um, between two types of rehab or two types of things um, different than the intervention. The intervention may be just one thing, uh, but interventions could be two things that you compare. Um, it's possible. Uh, the outcome, um, what are you hoping to achieve? And um, you could focus on, um, you know, shorter hospital stays, uh, faster rehab. Um, again, these are a little bit trickier to do, um, but they give you some things to think about if you're trying to get your topic down to be a little bit more focused. Um, you do not need to do all these things. If you do all these things, you're and limit by all these things, you're going to probably be down to nothing. But you may want to think about your topic and what might be appropriate for your topic to do some uh, smaller focus on it. Just a little bit of a um, reminder about OneSearch and Medline. I'm going to encourage you at this point to start in OneSearch. But if you are finding that you have a tremendous number of uh, results, the OneSearch searches a lot of stuff, including Medline, but also a bunch of psychology databases, a bunch of nursing databases. For some of your topics, if some of you have psychology topics, then you should definitely be in OneSearch because there's going to be a lot of research in those psychology databases that may very well inform your topic. But I'm gonna encourage everybody to be in OneSearch. 
if you're finding that the results are really, really high, and maybe that some of it doesn't seem as appropriate to your thing, maybe it's got a lot of nursing uh, results about nursing care in your topic or something like that, then you might want to switch to just searching Medline. Um, and again, if you need help with this, aren't sure, you can always talk to me. Um, just remember that Medline in Pub and PubMed have an a lot of overlap. Um, PubMed is the free version that's online provided by the U.S. government. Um, and you should also go check PubMed. PubMed's going to have the most recent stuff. And um, so you should definitely check that even after you've done one search and looked at Medline. It does have more stuff in PubMed. I will also remind you that you're going to be spending um, almost a year on this topic. And you should do another search in, oh, you know, October or November and see if there's some new articles that have come out on your topic. Um, it's very possible if you pick a fairly heading edge topic that some new stuff's going to come out and you need to double check that you've gotten everything that you want. PubMed Central is the all full text version of PubMed. So obviously not, um, it's not as big, but um, it gives you a lot of full text. And keep in mind that Medline provides a lot of full text of PubMed. Uh, PubMed doesn't always provide as much full text, some, but not all. So you need to use all three of these sometimes to get to the full text. If you can't find the full text of the article, please contact us if you can't figure out how to get it. We're happy to help you do that and we know how to do it. Um, and I'm not gonna do that in this class right now. Uh, just a reminder that most of Medline is PubMed. Uh, there's a little bit of PubMed that's future med Medline and a couple of things that are not. So you should be looking in one search uh, first. If you have way too much, consider just searching Medline. Uh, if there's not enough info or just you should go check PubMed to make sure there's not something current that isn't in Medline um, and double check that. If you cannot find full text in either of these, check PubMed Central before interlibrary loaning, and then you can still interlibrary loan anything you need and we will help you get it. If you have any questions about getting the full text of anything, ask us. We will be happy to help you get access to whatever it is that you need. The search techniques I would just like to remind you about. Um, uh, one is the quotation marks around an exact phrase. Uh, I strongly recommend not overusing this, but occasionally there are times where you really want the two words together and there might be a reason why they're not. And so using the quotation marks uh, could be very helpful. One of the things that I'm gonna encourage you and remind you about is truncation, which really is great and a lot of students do not use. I'm gonna demo this in a minute. Um, so for example, adolescent, Location symbol, the little asterisk above the H key, um, shift eight, is will give you more results without changing your search terms. So if you do adolescent with the way that I did with truncation, you'll get it with the T on the end, TS on the end, and with CE on the end. And that can be very useful. Um, some things are not good to do truncation. Health, heal, H-E-A-L -E with the asterisk will give you way too many results because it's heal and health and healthy and healthcare and a million other things. Um, so if all of a sudden your result, you try truncation and the results go crazy high, don't just take the truncation off and put the term that you most want, okay? You do shorten the word to give you alternative endings. So you don't put it at the end of a fully complete word because you're probably not going to get it. Um, if you need help, you can always email me. I'm happy to chat with you um, in whatever form is works for you and um, happy to talk by email, talk Zooms. You can schedule an online conference, topic conference with me. I will send out a schedule for how to do that. I will tell you that I'm going to be out of the country from May 3rd to May 18th, which is right before you have to turn this in. I will be having some conference times on the 19th um, if you wanna to talk to me and the 20th, which is a Saturday. Um, I will have some conference times there and I will have uh, plenty of conference times right before I leave um, in early May. So there should be options to contact me um, and I'd be happy to talk to you about stuff. 
I want to briefly demo a search in um, OneSearch again, just to show you a couple of things. I'm teaching this a little bit differently and I'm not exactly sure what I showed you all when I did it. So what I would suggest is put in one of your terms. And this is a topic that I had last year, uh, gut my microbiome, which was uh, is really an interesting topic. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff as you'll see in a minute, but put in one of your search terms and when you get to here, I see, oh, I've got 159,000 results. So obviously we're gonna need to do some focusing, which I was gonna do anyway, but I'm gonna cl click on advanced search. And this is gonna give us some help with our search term. So now I'm gonna do uh, gut microbiome and notice that it gives me some alternative terms that I like. So I'm going to pick on this and pick all these terms as possible synonyms for my main term. And this is one of the things I really think is helpful right now. Um, OneSearch has gotten much better at this. And so um, it's now looking at all four of those. If you have a term you don't like, you can just take it out. You can just remove it. Um, my next thing is going to be cognitive decline. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm looking at my cognitive choices, but I really want cognitive decline. And notice it's got a couple of other options um, with this. And I'm going to take out uh, cognitive function because I really want it to be sort of the negative thing. It's not all cognitive function. I really want decline or impairment. So I can take out what I don't want and leave what I do. And now I'm going to do a search. And I had 159,000, so this is definitely going to go down. But I still have 2,875, which is a lot. And so what am I going to do to um, get that smaller? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is go over here. And I do not want an article on gut microbiomes from 1970. You guys need to be in the last five years. So you're going to go down to 2018, move the little slider over. And so that gets me down to 2,600, which is better, but still high. And then I'm also gonna click on, this won't get rid of a lot, but just doing academic journal articles. Um, it will remove some, but I still have a ton of terms in here. So um, one of the things is, I also suggest take a look at the, at the search results and see what kinds of, am I missing some search terms? Is there something better that maybe I should be using that I haven't been using. And so when I look at this, I see quite a few ones that have gastrointestinal microbiome, including these, this one is from PubMed. And so I'm like, well, I don't have that in my search terms. Um, is, this, is this something I want? I have my gut thing. Am I getting everything with this? So um, I'm gonna go back up here and do, um, gastro, and this is what I really want. This has all three of the things I want. And so I'm going to keep those in there. And, um, let's see what happens when we do that. It will keep the date on there. So I don't have to do the date again. Okay. I got a couple more with this. So it probably was finding most of the things I wanted, but maybe I decide that I don't want just general cognitive decline and impairment. Maybe I want Alzheimer's and I really wanna look at that. And maybe I add dementia in here too. And so let's see how many I get with this. Oh, it went way back up again. Okay, so maybe I go back to cognitive, but I, I really wanna see what I've got. I want, I don't, you don't wanna just pick things because it gives you a lower amount. You wanna pick the things that are most uh, closely I'm now going to make this go back up higher, but I noticed here that it's gastrointestinal microbiome and I have microbiota. So I'm going to try truncation on this and see if this is going to make, um, is going to, uh, how that's going to do. And it goes way back. And anytime you do truncation, it goes way back up. So I'm going to do um, fecal transplants. Now it's gone way down. So maybe this is where I really, 43 is small. You've got to have seven really good studies, but 
this is really, really interesting. And maybe this is the way I would pursue it. I could also take this out and maybe I go by gender. So maybe women is something with women different than with all with men, who knows? So I'm gonna see if there's been some studies that focus on that. Now you will get some studies that have both men and women in them. Um, but this means if there's female on there that they did look at that as a, as a category in it. I've gone way down 267. So maybe this is, is my sweet spot. Um, and maybe this is where, and I'm definitely seeing some things that do talk about um, some especially female things. And even if they don't have a special article that's just focused on, um, on uh, um, on females, it still, that is a category that they did when they did the study. So this is my example one. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, and you will see that there's full text finder. That means the full text is available. And if you see full text, you should just click on it. If you don't see full text, it'll say request via interlibrary loan and you should just click on that and it'll pull up a form to, to fill out, to send it, to request it. And we will go get it for you. We will get as many as you need. Um, there's no limit. It's all free. And most of these articles are going to be emailed to you without you ever having to come to the library. Uh, again, if you have questions about any of this, uh, please contact me by email or schedule a uh, time to conference together. I look forward to working with you.